Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button, uh, leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music. Just like this, we're gonna take a look today at a brand new Thin Lizzy box set. This thing's a massive box set. Uh, seven discs, 99 tracks. A ridiculous number of these are unreleased. And I'm gonna go through all that in a little bit here and I'll do an unboxing for it. Uh, the box set itself came out on October 23rd of 2020. Uh, but for me at least it was back ordered so I'm just getting it now and diving into it and reviewing it for you guys here. A um, little background on the band for those of you that don't know. Uh, the band formed all the way back in 1969 uh, but broke up in 1983, so they weren't around very long, and they released their debut album in 1971. In all, they released 12 studio albums over a 12-year span, and during that time, they had many different members as well as a lot of uh, future famous guitar players who came through the ranks. Uh, just to name a couple of them here, we got Gary Moore, who's a, you know, an amazing blues rock guitarist and solo musician in his own right, probably more famous for that than his time when he was in Thin Lizzy. Snowy White was also a guitar player for them uh, for at one point. And of course, he's uh, probably more famously known for being a Pink Floyd and Roger Waters uh, sideman. And then we've got John Sykes, who came from the new wave of British heavy metal band, the Tigers of Pantang before, but eventually would go on to play in White Snake. And again, is probably more famous for being in White Snake than being in Thin Lizzy. Uh, but that's kind of a running theme here because uh, in all, Thin Lizzy wasn't that big of a band in the US, albeit they were much bigger around the world. Um, along with mainstay guitarist, though, Scott Gorm, who was with them throughout, um, they were known for their twin lead guitar work as well as for working in Irish folk uh, music into their uh, the music itself, the songs and so forth. Um, and here in the U.S., they were known for the song The Boys Are Back in Town off their 1976 album Jailbreak. But also, uh, you may know them from uh, in 1998 uh, off of Garage Incorporated, Metallica covered Whiskey in the Jar. Um, and so you may know them from that as well. A lot of the younger uh, you know, music fans are going to know them from that as opposed to uh, people of my age, maybe that grew up with the classic rock song, uh, The Boys Are Back in Town. Uh, but beyond these two songs, uh, there's many, many amazing tracks by Thin Lizzy that are definitely worth exploring. Um, and following on with 1983's Thunder and Lightning, the band did break up. And so then three short years later, uh, lead singer and bassist Phil Lynott died. Um, in 1986. So, you know, effectively ending the band uh, for any further activity, although there have been a number of tours and uh, live shows and things like that, that a version of Thin Lizzy has done more as a tribute or in remembrance to the band. They've never recorded any additional studio material, studio albums, anything like that. One live album has been uh, released. Um, but um, eventually this reformed Thin Lizzy evolved into Black Star Writers, um, and they've since put out four outstanding uh, studio records that are totally worth checking out. If you are a fan of Thin Lizzy, it is worth checking out Black Star Writers because they are right in the same vein. Uh, it's got Scott Gorham in there, so uh, totally uh, legit uh, full-on musical act. Um, but let's talk about the box set. That's what we're interested in here. And so this thing was compiled by guitarist Scott Gorham along with Nick Sharp. So it's a fully authorized thing. It is not just a record label cash grab kind of thing that sometimes uh, compilations, box sets, things of this nature are here. And it is being released in conjunction with the band's 50th anniversary release of their debut single, The Farmer, which came out in 1970. And the box set covers their entire career, including all of the lineups. So this collection endeavors to dig deeper than the average uh, collection of hits usually does. 
Um, it's got six CDs, one DVD. Um, there are 99 tracks on this thing that are across those six CDs. And um, it's the selection and the versions of those tracks which are really what the joy of this box set is all about. It's got 74 tracks which are previously unreleased and uh, 83 of these tracks that have never appeared on CD. So uh, for those of you that are uh, CD fans like myself, you know, we're getting these for the first time here. Uh, disc one in here is titled Greatest Hits, uh, but the cool thing is it's got single mixes, seven inch versions, edits, and some remixes on it. Disc two is titled The Early Years. This one's got rough mixes, single edits, demos, b-sides, and it's also got some radio sessions that are on here that are really cool. Then discs three, four, and five are all rarities, and these are alternate takes, demos, and instrumental versions of the big hits and everything that you know. The sound quality is all really good. I was a little worried that uh, demos from early on, 70s, that type stuff, might not be that good a quality, but these are fantastic. And then disc six in here is the China Tour 1980. And so that's a 15 track previously unreleased live show. And again, very good quality here, not a bootleg. This thing here, uh, professionally recorded, sounds really good. And disc seven in here is called TV and Beyond. And it's uh, got a night on the town, the TV special, which has uh, four live performances. And then it's also got a one hour BBC documentary that was called Bad Reputation on here that's really good. And then just to round things out, you've got memorabilia in here. There's a hardback book that collects together all the tour books from throughout the band's many tours. That part here alone is worth it just in my opinion. Um, and then it's got a book in here called um, Still in Love with You. And it features quotes and stories from the band, uh, past members, uh, people that were involved with the band, and then just general famous musicians, people like Joe Elliott of Def Leppard, Glenn Hughes, and other famous musicians like that in here, talking about uh, stories and things and their interests and getting to know Thin Lizzy and stuff like that. So really kind of cool background information, the way that they do it in that regard. Then there's a poetry book by Phil Lynott, a lead singer and bassist of the band, and four art prints in here. So let's take a look at this. This is the front cover of it. I'll flip it around there and you can see that it runs through all the track listing and telling whether or not they are edits and uh, alternate versions, rough mixes, demos, and things of that nature. There's the spine on it, and I love that they've got that uh, black rose that's on it there. Nothing on the top, just the black rose, so done a little differently there and uh, just the UPC stuff. And it lifts right off like that, a um, little difficult uh, to get up. Let's see if I can do it uh, while we're kind of holding it in this awkward position. There we go. All right, uh, nothing on the underside there, but right on top of it, we get uh, the hardback book that is all of the tour books bound together in here. Um, I will say sort of right off the bat, uh, one of my complaints is that there's uh, not one of those straps that's in here that makes this easy to pull out, so a little difficult. You'll see me kind of digging into it. Then we get the book that's in here called Still in Love with You that goes through all those kind of quotes and stories, that sort of stuff. And then you can see this thing here, that is the Phil Lynott uh, poetry book. We've got the four art prints that are down here, and I'll pull those out in here so that we can see what's underneath and then we've got uh, the discs that are in here and I'll go through those. Um, so real quick, let's go ahead and actually do the discs real quick and then I'll finish on the, the memorabilia type stuff. So each of these uh, discs are done in a gatefold cardboard diggy pack style. Unfortunately, there's no photos or anything on the inside. What I do like is that I can take each one of these things out, listen to it from, you know, separate from the box, but I do wish they put a little bit more into uh, the packaging on each of these. See, nothing else on the inside, but again, um, you know, track listing and everything on the back. So I'm not gonna keep opening each one. I am just going to very quickly show you the different covers and the way that they are done like that. What is cool though is that they, uh, when opened this way, you do get a bigger picture on it. So that part is, is cool there. And then we've got Night on the Town, Bad Reputation, the 
the DVD. So those are the discs. Let me put those aside here and let's start going through uh, this stuff. We'll start with the poetry book. So this was an actual poetry book that um, he released, um, you know, early on. So uh, it's cool to actually get a reproduction print of it. It is not something that is created just for this book it, or, or box set, I should say. Um, it is something that uh, was actually done and released by him. So cool to get that as a reproduction. I always like those things. And then we got some art prints that are here. Very cool Chinatown print. Uh, this one here. I always like this one, the rocker. And then this one here is very cool. This one here um, was done up as a, a sketch of what would be a potential statue for him um, and taken from uh, uh, his Solo and Soho album, which is the uh, photo of himself that he actually liked the best, according to the artist that did that. But this here is the real cool thing here. Uh, Thin Lizzy on tour, and it collects together all of their um, tour books and stuff like that. So. Uh, there is some write-up and stuff in here that is, uh, you know, from each of these tour books. Um, it's also got cool advertisements and things from back in the day uh, that are really cool, uh, worth seeing in here that are just fun as memories. Uh, there's some trivia stuff. There's question and answer things that are in here uh, from those tour books and stuff. No real history or anything like that. It is not a book like that. It is predominantly all just stuff from their tour books but um i appreciate that i don't i don't need a full-on history if i'm getting stuff like this that is its own history and so forth so very very cool uh getting all of these different um uh, tour books compiled into one thing you know usually a box set like this they would do one tour book or something like that but here you're getting them all um, in this here, uh, again, no real history. Um, this one here has uh, the, the quotes and everything that are in it. it. does have some cool photos and things like that. And you get some sense of the history going through those quotes and whatnot. In the back of this, it does do a breakdown of the track listing, but you can see how tiny that text is. I almost needed a microphone or a magnifying glass uh, to go through it all. So pretty, pretty uh, uh, dense amount of text and everything. So I would say maybe my only uh, you know bit of uh, complaint on this is one: uh, the box set's a little hard to uh, access without that strap helping to pull everything out, and the fact that there's no uh, real breakdown or history and and uh, the actual track by track uh, write up is so tiny on things. It would have been nice to have gotten a little bit of a behind the scenes of where those demo tracks come from, uh, sourced from that sort of stuff. Outside of that though, I really do enjoy this box set. I would say, you know, uh, interesting, you know, it's despite the band having only been together for 14 years, they did make a huge impact on the musical world as well as a lot of famous musicians. You find that out through uh, this, the Still in Love with You uh, quote book that's in here. And, you know, while they were much bigger outside the U.S., they're totally worth exploring if you don't know a lot about them. But I do highly recommend this box set for Thin Lizzy fans as I do think it is a deep dive in for Thin Lizzy fans with all of its rare versions and unreleased tracks and things like that. Uh, if you are a brand new, a beginner in Thin Lizzy, do check out some of their albums first and or a best of before diving into this, but I do think this is a really great collection. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, please remember to leave your comments, let me know your thoughts. Hope everyone has a great day, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.